Hi, I'm Wyatt. In this video, we'll talk about the 6-liter diesel fuel injection control module, or FICM. Let's take a closer look at the FICM and the install process. The 6-liter FICM is an electronic module that controls and powers the fuel injectors. There are two parts to a FICM, the power supply and the logic port. There are a number of ways a FICM can fail, but the most common failure is the FICM power supply itself. That's what we'll focus on here. The FICM power supply is designed to output 48 volts, which actuates the fuel injectors. However, after time, some FICMs will produce less than 48 volts, which leads to problems like hard starts and rough idle. The Bulletproof Diesel FICM power supply is designed to match up perfectly with your existing logic board and maintains all programming, fitment, and function. Also offered from Bulletproof Diesel is a six-phase power supply that is able to be set at an output of 48, 53, or 58 volts. This option expands on the four-phase stock FICM and provides more power if desired. To access and test a FICM, the degas bottle is unfastened and moved to the edge of the vehicle. Now there is enough room to see the access panel on top of the FICM. Six liter FICMs are either a four pin or a seven pin type. Simply count the pins under the access panel to determine which kind you have. To test the voltage on a four pin FICM, use a grounded voltmeter and touch to the outside pin under the FICM access panel, being careful not to touch the FICM casing itself. An assistant needs to turn the key to the on not start position, at which point voltage can be read. For a 7 pin setup, repeat the steps but touch the voltmeter to this pin. Four phase bulletproof FICMs are preset to a 48 volt output. Upgrading to a six phase bulletproof FICM provides a choice of 48, 53, or 58 volt output. All right, so we're gonna install a power supply from Bulletproof Diesel on this FICM. So we remove the eight screws on the body of the FICM. Also a T20 Torx. When all the screws are out of the body, just flip it over. We're gonna remove the two Torx T20s off the cover. which you might have removed already to test it. And then we're gonna remove the four Torx T10s, which are your pins. If you have a seven pin, there will be seven of these screws. Once the screws are removed, carefully find a spot to open the two boards, find a corner and drive it, a screwdriver in if you can, away from the electronic components inside, carefully pry the two components apart without touching anything on the inside. This is your power supply, it can go back to Bulletproof Diesel or you can keep it. This is the new Bulletproof Diesel power supply. Now we're going to decide which voltage we want this power supply to output. This is the six phase version, so we have the option to change the voltage. We do the, that by cutting one of these two voltage sensing wires here. And if you look at the board, printed on the board is a map of what to do if pertaining to which voltage you would like for an output. You can use something as simple as household scissors to cut the wire. In this case, we want 53 volts output. So we come over here to the side where it says 53 volts. It says to open VS1. VS1 is this particular wire right here, which in this case is black in color. And so we will clip that wire. And now we've set it for 53 volts. We also wanna ensure that the rubber gasket is still intact and on. In most cases, this will come off Sometimes it will be attached to your old power supply. You just wanna make sure that you've got it on and positioned correctly before you put the logic board on to the power supply. Fits down in the groove. Make sure that your pins are lined up with your pin holes here. And there are two alignment dowels, one here 
and one on this side that will ensure that you get it on the right way. Once that's on, you reinstall the eight screws. Once those screws are all in, then we're gonna install the T10s on the back. Once those are installed, just the cover, the new bulletproof diesel cover goes on. And again, these are back to T20. Make sure you tighten all of those snug. And voila, ready to go back on the truck. And it's not to fix them. On a lot of these trucks, especially the older ones, these locks will break and the Fickham connectors will tend to work their way out. A uh, good way to repair that instead of replacing your whole harness, take a piece of 5 8 heater hose and just lay it on the valve cover underneath them and they physically can't fall out once it's mounted. It's a lot cheaper than a new harness. Normally you would hear them click and lock in but these locks are broken. Okay. At this point, Dell reassembles the rest of the engine. During the course of this build, which is detailed in this video series, we have corrected the five identified pattern failures on the six liter engine. To see our other solutions, just view the additional video segments in this series. We pride ourselves on our knowledge and customer service, so if you have questions relating to the 6 liter, don't hesitate to call or email.